On the 1st of August, 1978, the BMW headquarters in the UK looked like this. Seventeen months later, it looked like this. It comprised an office block, amenities and showroom of 4,000 square metres, with a training centre of 1,750 square metres, and a warehouse of 10,200 square metres. The whole complex became operational on the 1st of January 1980, on schedule, and in spite of the fact that the winter of 1978-79 was exceptionally severe. How was it done? BMW had been impressed with the construction history of an award-winning building at Bath, the Herman Miller facility, where steel had been used as the major building material. So BMW chose the same main contractor, Wilches, and the same design team, architect Nicholas Grimshaw, consulting engineer Peter Brett, services engineer Ronald Hurst. The site at Bracknell Newtown met all requirements. It was realised that within three to four weeks of the start of construction, the problem of short daylight hours and cold weather could be anticipated. In view of this, and the time scale for completion, it was decided to adopt a structural solution based on a dry envelope with a large amount of off-site fabrication. Steel was therefore the choice for the structural frame and the cladding support framework. It minimised the risk of delays arising in industries fringing the construction industry. Steel had the outstanding advantage of being a simple, highly repetitive, easily erected, essentially dry construction. Because of site conditions and as a safeguard against wet weather, terum sheeting was spread across the site. This proved to be a vital decision, for no delays arising from ground conditions occurred. While site clearing was proceeding and the ground being prepared, the column grid was finalised and an economic design was arrived at for all the buildings. There was to be one basic column size and two beam sizes for the warehouse and one column and one beam size for the office block. All steel details to be common throughout. The implications of any change were thought through for the whole structure, the aim being to avoid special and therefore more expensive answers. Two steelwork fabricators were contracted as extra insurance against delays. One for the warehouse frame and one for the office block. In the event, this was possibly unnecessary because of the fine performance of both companies. The office block columns were each fabricated from one BSC section welded into a continuous length to the height of the four-storey building. A standard steel frame was also fabricated to support the external cladding. Steel was prepared by shot blasting and later by zinc spray. Stub cantilevers were welded onto these columns. The office building steelwork was delivered to the site and was quickly fitted together. The whole building was a single bay portal frame, having a 10 metres span with one and a quarter metre cantilever on either side to carry services. The frames were at five metre centres and supported precast concrete floor slabs. Column bases were put down and bolt holes drilled using a standard template. Bolts were grouted in with epoxy resin. So accurate were the methods used that not a single bolt was out of place and time and cost savings were considerable. Stability during erection was provided by temporary angle bracing. In the final state, lateral stability was ensured by portal action across the building while longitudinal stability was provided by in-situ concrete firewalls to the stairs and lift shaft. Meanwhile, at the second steelwork contractors, the warehouse structure was being fabricated, consisting of supporting columns, ribs and spine beams. As one luxury for the designers, 
the heads of the columns were tapered to give a neater line across the roof beams. Winter had begun with a vengeance when the steel started to be delivered to the site. But nothing stopped the work proceeding. beams end to end made up the 85 meter width of the warehouse building. All these 20 meter rib spans as well as the supporting spine beams were full strength butt welded in situ for economy and to control deflection. Two types of sight weld were required and for these the welders were pre-qualified and tested. How much they enjoyed the distinction is a matter for conjecture. On completion, all wells were checked by sandbirds, and despite the appalling weather, all were found satisfactory, thanks both to the polythene tents devised for the welders and to the training scheme. Lateral support to the top flanges of the steel ribs was next provided in the shape of a 35 mm deep galvanized and coated steel spanning deck and this, in turn, supported the roof insulation and weathering cover. The roof was detailed without falls. The weight of rainwater deflects the steel and so it's directed into the mid-span downpipes. Cladding panels were the same for both warehouse and office. They were fixed to a 5 meter by 1.5 meter steel support system standardized over the whole building skin. The rounded corners of both buildings were achieved with rolled steel angles or channel sections fabricated from flat plate. Whilst this cost rather more than a normal rectangular corner, one single corner detail was used throughout the whole job and the gain in appearance more than justified the expense. Nick Grimshaw summed this up by saying, when a building has been designed and built as cheaply and as efficiently as this, a small part of the saving can be used to ensure a truly elegant appearance. The steelwork was provided with fire protection where required. Intumescent paint on beams and cladding around columns. This protective cladding provided a suitable base for final decorative finishes. Pre-finished, maintenance-free and interchangeable Alucabon panels were glazed into neoprene gaskets to clad the structural frames. Internally, the panels have a pre-finished board and insulation quilt. For total flexibility, a louvered band was taken around the perimeter of the building, through which all service demands could be accommodated at any future time without piercing the building's skin. Of the total project, the BMW chairman said, In Germany, we could not have had this building completed so quickly and with so little trouble. 
There can be no doubt that progress during the very severe winter of 1978-79 was greatly assisted by the dry, repetitive and efficient system of construction used. The phased handover of warehouse, upper floor office accommodation and ground floor showroom were all achieved ahead of schedule. As with all successful projects, great emphasis was placed on teamwork. The considerable benefits to be gained were proved from the early liaison and cooperation of the design and construction teams brought together in this prestigious design and build contract.